All right, we are recording. So hello to everyone watching this uh, on the Facebook page or on the YouTube channel or you know from the future. So Dominic Hawkins here from Reigning Spirit Dojo and I'm joined by a special guest tonight, Craig Guest, my Bujikan teacher the last 11 or 12 years um, and a mm -hmm. very good friend. Uh, so thanks for joining me, Craig, tonight for the sessions. Pleasure, Dom. Glad to be here. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. interested in the projects. Yeah, I know. Always a bit of fun, especially while we're trapped at home at this time, hey? Um, so I've just got my little notes next to me for my questions. I, I wanted to just start off. I've been, I've been reaching out to um, friends who are, and teachers and, and colleagues of different arts, martial arts, yoga, uh, qigong, tai chi, just trying to start up this dialogue about uh, their personal experiences of those things, of those arts. Uh, so before we get into like lots of questions about how you, what you think about martial arts in terms of its, its use for everyone, its, its application in today's world, I was wondering if you could give a bit of a background about your involvement in martial arts, um, how long you've been studying, how you got involved, things like that. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I, I, you know, my first memory of going to a martial arts class was when I was about seven or six. Yeah, right. And uh, it was it was a judo class. We were visiting, we were visiting someone's house, and their son was doing judo, and he's my age. Yeah. And the parents said, "Oh, do you want to go? Do you want to go do the, yeah. you know, go with Billy to do the judo class?" Yeah. So I went along, and I just loved it, but. <laughs> We didn't have the I didn't ever had the opportunity to train in martial arts. Yeah, uh, I didn't I didn't know, you know, I was too young to follow through with anything or even to express my own desire to do it. Right. Um, I don't think it occurred to my parents. And, and this was that would have been that would have been like 1975. Yeah, right. So it would have been difficult to find as well. You know, yeah. you played soccer and football and and uh, cricket. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And, Basketball. And was that um, was that Victoria at the time, or when you were in Queensland? I I think it was in Queensland, but I honestly I was that young. I don't even know what state I was in. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> in many, you know, <laughs> throw it on thunder in there. <laughs> um, and then and then I developed a, a real interest in um, uh, kung fu movies. You know, it was the 70s. Bruce Lee was huge. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, he's a real figure from the 1970s. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I developed a real interest in Chinese martial arts because we had a we had a VHS player. Yeah. And not everyone did. You know, I don't know where Dad got this player from. It probably fell yeah. off the back of the truck, I think. Um, but anyway, there was a, a video store not far from us. Um, you you'll laugh, but um, I remember us hiring our first ever video cassettes. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Dad went down to hire, and we hired, we hired three cassettes, yeah. and we had to leave a sixty-five dollar deposit for each one. <laughs> so it was a hundred and ninety dollars deposit to take out three yeah. video cassettes that so we had to bring back the next day, and then they gave us our money back. Wow. And this is before. This yeah. is before it was like cash. So yeah. imagine how much money they had on the shop premise. Yeah, in the vault. They hired out, you know, hundred video cassettes a night or whatever. <laughs> so wow. I've been terrified of getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so I, I I really got into uh, Chinese uh, Hong Kong kung fu movies. Yeah. Uh, Shaolin versus Ninja. Yeah. You know, these yeah. wood block sound effects <laughs> like they yeah, you know, and the horses up together, and you know, 30, 36 chambers of the Shaolin, and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, um, these early stuff. I just loved them. I used to watch them endlessly. Wow. And my dad hated it. You know, <laughs> what's all this? What's all this chop suey bullshit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. um, but I, but I was a kid who, who, uh, much like the adult, you know, I'm a pretty lazy. <laughs> <laughs> lazy at times and um i spent a lot of my time watching mm. watching these movies and it was one of the few things that i'd expressed an interest in mm. and uh he saw in the paper so this would i was 13 so mm. i've probably been watching these movies for about a year and uh, he saw in the paper just you know because the paper back then it's flicking through and it was That's a type of school opening up ah, and yep. uh, 
you said, are you interested in learning Taekwondo? The idea that I could learn how to do those things um, had never occurred to me really. Yeah. Uh, long forgotten about the, the judo seven years ago. That was half a lifetime ago. Totally. That was you know, ancient history, <laughs> six years and, before. And then these movies um, are just kind of heroes yeah. on a screen. They're not like, you don't know anyone. Yeah. Who's a, yeah. yeah, it was like watching Star Wars. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> when I go learn to fight a fly a, the thing off into space. I'm like, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Um, so he he asked me if I wanted to go. And I said, yeah, I'd love to go do that. And um, uh, so myself, my brother, him, the next door neighbor, the next door neighbor's cousin, the cousin's wife, and uh, two or three other people that he knew right. went down for this Taekwondo class. Yeah. And that was basically it. It was just all uh, of us and plus each other. the guy, yeah. Plus the guy who probably couldn't believe his luck that a dozen people <laughs> walked in on one call. You know, I've never had that, and I've been open for twenty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, uh, so I started training in Taekwondo um, in probably nineteen eighty one, I think. Right. Nineteen eighty one, and I did that for a few years. I got up to the grade just before brown belt so i was 15 and then i left school and started work so that was the end of martial arts for me yeah yeah um, and I, I loved it i don't think i was ever fitter than when i was that age hmm. in taekwondo hmm. because the class was mostly yeah. exercise yeah and and then a little bit of sparring and a little bit of carter training but mostly it was sit-ups and push-ups and Goodness. yeah you know just conditioning things and stretching you know it was yeah. a two-hour class so we do we do half an hour of stretching half an hour of Wow. aerobic exercise half an hour of um you know some carter training yeah, and then yeah. and then other things three steps sparring or sparring yeah. or whatever it yeah. might have been depending on their grades um and i remember i remember the instructor kicking kicking through cement blocks <laughs> so he had some some cement blocks that were about five centimeters thick and he's he's kicked his way through them with uh, with a side kick you know which i thought was incredibly impressive Absolutely, um, yeah. seventeen-year-old, yeah, fifteen. Yeah, yeah, very impressive at yeah. that age. Very impressive now. So, you know, <laughs> easy thing to do. Yeah, I can't do it. Um, no, <laughs> either. <laughs> Completely different martial art, right? Yeah, yeah. I probably could back then kick my way through things, but uh, yeah. but at this stage of the game, no, not so much. Um, and and then from there, I stopped for about five years, and always wanted to get back into it. Um, and at this stage, I'd moved from the Gold Coast to Sydney. Mm. Um, and from Sydney, I was out with a couple of flatmates and went into, I think you know this story, but went into a bar uh, on a Sunday morning. We were just waiting for my brother to get off the bus oh, yeah, and the pub was right across the road. So we just yeah. walked in there and we just like, oh, I'll have one beer. It was like one in the afternoon on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just have a beer while we wait for him to get, up, get him from the bus. Sounds like and, uh, <laughs> while we're in there, yeah, yeah. And, and and while we're in there, this crazy guy pulled a knife on us and tried to yeah, you right. know, yeah, you told me, yeah, yeah. And uh, we all thought we were going to die. You know, we're only I was only twenty or twenty one or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember what age I was. Mm -hmm. um, just turned twenty one, actually. I do remember. Um, just turned twenty one. Yeah. And uh, this guy would have been about my age now, so he was you know older. Oh. Yeah. Gray, um, big guy had scabs on his face from yeah. being in a fight or something. Yeah. And uh, he just came over and just pulled the knife out and was going to stab us all and stuff. Yeah. So, so I'd been meaning to get back into martial arts. I went looking for martial arts. I was, yeah. I was um, after a martial art that had a history of dealing with bladed weapons. That was kind of, you know, I was never interested in tournaments and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I always still yeah. consider them to be rubbish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not interested. No. Um, uh, knives and things like that, I think, are really important. Um, and so I went looking around and I, I had a look at Wing Chun, I had a look at some karate schools. Uh, and I, I was walking along just near, just near um, Central Station in Sydney. Yeah. Living around that area anyway. And uh, I was actually living in Redfern, yep. yeah, back when it was really dodgy. <laughs> and, um, uh, and I saw this sign and it said Tagakoru Ninjutsu training. Yeah. And 
uh, also another school there for Wing Chun training. Yeah. So I went upstairs and and uh, went in and and I walked in <coughs> and the one of the black belts came over to me and and uh, in in the Bujin Khan school I don't know what Bujin Khan was but Tagakro Ninjutsu School. Yeah. And he goes, um, oh, have you done any other martial arts? And I said, I said, yeah, I, I you know, I did Taekwondo for a few years when I was younger. You know, I was the ripe old age of twenty one. <laughs> Back when I was young, you, you know. Yeah. And uh, I was like 13 or whatever. <laughs> and he goes, oh, fantastic. Well, whatever you like, just punch me in the face. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I just went, sorry. Because <laughs> I've never been violent. I'm not a violent person or whatever. But, um, um, so I went, okay. He said, no, I won't touch you and I won't hurt you. But just whenever you like, just punch me in the face. And I was like, okay. And uh, so I just sort of. I just sort of stuck my hand out. It probably was only about that fast, you know. Yeah. It wasn't a punch. It would have yeah. done tap. anything. Really. Yeah, not even that fast. You know, it was like just slow. And he moved 45 degrees back. Mm. Well, in Taekwondo and, and virtually all martial arts at that time, you just blocked the yeah. air around you yeah. and you went forward or backwards. Angling wasn't something that martial arts, many martial arts did. Right. Nowadays, it's normal. You know, they've all absorb these ideas in from other systems uh, as much life has changed but but back then it was like what <laughs> and he goes just keep punching and uh so i had a three or four other lazy punches at him and he moved this way and that way and yeah. and i was just you know me i just wanted to uh it wasn't about and still today isn't about um winning hmm. And I think this is one of the really interesting things about Bujin Khan training. Bujin Khan training isn't about winning, it's about not losing. Mm. Big difference. And there's a big difference from that. Because yeah. winning is a very is a much smaller concept and not losing is a broader thing and, and winning can be a subset of yeah. not losing. Yeah. Uh, or managing loss yeah. as well. Yeah. A way of you know yeah, well said. Uh, so it's a really it's a really interesting interesting and and a real point of difference between our system and and most other systems uh, yeah. that, that you see not losing is the goal I, i've not noticed necessarily beating someone i said I've, I've noticed that um even just in interpersonal dealings with with um just some people from from different ideologies they've studied different ways of thinking um and yeah then there isn't an opportunity for for a win-win negotiation or even like a, a mutual, it, it's win or die, you know? Win or die, it's yeah. It really makes it very difficult for those it people. It does make it very difficult to, to, yeah, they're not diplomats. They're, um, I, 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 this will sound really condescending yeah. to some other martial arts maybe, yeah. um, but I do think, I do think of our training to be like officers training. Hmm. And they're training to be like, you know, frontline soldiers. Yeah. Go over there and do that. That's your, you do that. You have to win this hill or die. Yeah. And, and I think Bujin Khan is a little bit more strategic, a little bit more interesting. And really it's the ones pushing the pieces around on the board. I was, um, I, I was um, using a similar analogy last week in one of my, my videos. Um, just talking about that, about how you've got these arts that are about, you know, Genghis Khan's riding over the hilltop in three months and everyone thinks, holy crap, we've, we've, we better get ready. Well, then you just taught, you know, wrote. But then there's a whole other subset of society that are taught strategy. Hmm. And they're not the people who are riding out to the front line. They're the people who are organising the next 20, 50 years, 100 years of planning yeah, and how how different how how the study of those arts even they they create different human beings, you know, very they, much so. They form different ways of thinking for those people. Yeah, very much so. Um, the the thinking methods in the Bujin Khan are not unique, but certainly a lot broader mm. than than what I've seen in most systems. And you, you do see certain personalities attracted to certain types of martial arts. Yeah. Um, and then those 
personality traits tend to get refined by that style absolutely and sharpen them become more yeah more exaggerated than what they might have been you know yeah. a lot of people go into martial arts to build confidence because they're they might, they might be scared or something of, well, not scared, but you know, they want to learn self-defense because yeah, yeah. something's happened or they just think it's a good thing to know. So at the fact of their mind somewhere, there's maybe a, a seed of doubt or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Other people will train because they just want to like doing physical activity. You yeah. know, they just enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly, certainly uh, different people are attracted to different styles of martial arts, you know, yeah and 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 they don't like other styles yeah um <laughs> yeah like they reflect the character traits you're trying to get away from you know yeah and i think if you're unlucky enough to land in a martial art that fits your basic personality quite well then there's not a lot of room for growth yeah it probably won't challenge you intellectually end up as It'll just reinforce your ideas. Yeah. It's like your Facebook stream. It's yeah. full of things that you like. Totally. Yeah. So more people who it'll make sense to you because <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there's no real challenging thoughts or challenging behaviors. Um, in the Bujin Khan, there's two schools that that are linked together, um, Kotaru and Gyokuru, and, and everyone knows about that. You know. Yeah. Um, and Gyokuru. And they're Taoist schools, and, and Gyokuru is uh, uh, considered more feminine, um, and it's very evasive, and it's lighter, mm. and it's more strategic. Well, it's it's not more strategic. It has a uh, any anything that you do is a strategy, right? It, it, it has it can be a good strategy or a bad strategy. Yeah. Yeah, but it but it's very slippery, very yeah. you know, uh, it doesn't meet things head on so much. Um, the, the, the negative sides of those traits are sneakiness and yeah and manipulation yep. yeah yeah uh but the positives are um you know not being drawn into confrontations unnecessarily and uh um making things happen in ways that aren't as obvious yeah yeah uh, and there's always those two sides of those two sides you know the positive yeah. and sort of negatives of your crew yeah um and kotaru which which is almost like the other side of the coin in terms of martial arts is, is you know, Gyokuru is short and circular and, and Kotaru is longer and more linear, mm, mm. more aggressive, yeah. more male. Um, uh, and usually when people study those schools, they tend to like one or the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. Already I, I know which one I prefer, yeah. You know which one you like. And, and I tend to like Gyokuru more mm, same. when I study. Yeah. Because I'm not an overtly aggressive person. I never have been. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the training for me is really is Kotaru. I was going to say, have you found that, um, that because you were naturally, uh, maybe, maybe predominantly attracted to, to Gyokuru from a, your character, that mm. actually the study of Kotaru is what helps you to fill in the gaps and, and learn, Very much so. um, you know, straight down the line? Yeah, yeah. It taught me how to be more direct. It taught me how to be, uh, to stand up for myself a little bit more. Yeah. I was already good at, at, at being yeah. evasive. And, <laughs> and, you know, for want of a better phrase, sneaky and manipulative. Yeah. Um, avoiding. But yeah. avoiding conflict and things, you know, I already had that down pat. Kotaru, um, <coughs> I found more confronting for me. Um, but the two things together, like the in your the yin yang symbol, yeah. um, the two things together gave me more mm. a more rounded personality and and being able to uh, choose how to respond to things rather than something happening mm. it affecting me and that effect coming out like an equation. Like you're just a victim of your. Yeah, was something came at me. Yeah. I looked at it and studied it. Yes. And then go. I'm going to handle that that way. Yeah, this is this that's is a very big good perspective. This is I think yeah. so advantageous in this way. So you're not controlled by external things as much, mm. which is nice. It's very freeing. You know, I'm not saying that that uh, 
you know, you become some sort of <laughs> PhD in psychology or, or untouchable yeah. thing. Yeah. But but the extremes of that that you have more control over yourself. Yeah. Because you have more choices. And when you're you know, the big thing about martial arts training is it removes fear mm. and gives you some clarity when under pressure should be the goal. And when you remove those other things that, that are in the way of that, you become mm. able to choose a way to respond rather than having your choices dictated by mm. your emotions. Definitely. It becomes more logical. You become more like Spock and less like Captain Kirk. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's a minimal progression. But, you know, they're the two sides of the coin, you know. Yeah. Logic so, and kind of passion. Logic and passion and passion, emotion, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you, well, it, so I really a, like that study. It's a really good segue um, into the next sort of question that I had for you on that, which is specifically um, in terms of martial arts in general. So you say you've, you've studied um, different styles of martial arts, and I know that I know that you've dipped your toe into other things as well beyond your a um, little bit, a couple of things. Um, where we were just talking about the positives of using something like like the Kotoru Gyokoru relationship. To, to help you actually develop part of your character in, in these ways to become a more rounded individual. And yep. um, is that, if you think about martial arts in general, is that really what you think one of the major benefits has been for you? Are there, are there lots of other things that come to mind? I mean, obviously there's just basic fitness and health, but I'm talking more kind of character building or character development. Yeah, I mean... Um... Those, those would be the main things for me. Mm. As, as you know, because we've had many conversations about it, I'm not a, a, what you would call, other people might say I'm spiritual in some <laughs> sense, but I don't consider myself a spiritual person. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, uh, uh, but that doesn't mean you have a license to behave in whatever way that you choose. You mm. know, There's still repercussions for behaviour and, you try to move through life without damaging things um, yeah. and yeah. making things better. Basically, um, makes you sound makes you sound a bit like a monk or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, I, I sort of subscribe to humanistic type uh, yeah. thoughts and yes. and, and behaviours, yeah. uh, which is a lot like a lot of religions, just without the religious aspect. Totally. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's, it's about know, that, that's kind of how I try to live, but it's not always easy. <laughs> Well, I suppose it, it answers, it does, it proposes, proposes that in another question. It's like, um, have you found that the study of martial arts for you has, has actually helped you live in human society and, in, and interact, you know, as a human being, um, developing compassion for others, but also boundaries and learning how to interact with other humans who are not necessarily always... You know, it's not like we're all walking around in a state of philosophers who are all highly no. well thought out. <laughs> you know? No, no. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that, you know, uh, a little bit like uh, society is a bunch of cogs and they're turning together mm. and uh, sometimes those things don't work well and if you're one of those cogs, you can apply some grease and it helps to, yeah, yeah, the relationship to turn a little easier. Right. And, and that's kind of kind of what I tried to do um, around me. Uh, it's not always, you know, not always how it turns out, but uh, <laughs> I try to, I, I try. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I can do. <laughs> I, I, uh, I can relate. I can relate. Um, yeah. Um, one of my favourite sayings was from my grandmother. She used to tell me that the... Um, uh, the road to hell was always paved with good intentions <laughs> and I've, yeah, sure. I've, I've enjoyed finding that to be true but i still i still try <laughs> you know you still try. so i mean in that have you found listening to what you just said in my mind i'd consider that say strategy it's like it's a form of social strategy learning yeah, for sure. learning learning you go okay there's a cog here that that needs to be oiled um and you've got some idea of how you could oil that that there's this raving lunatic. Well, there's a few ways that I can respond and some of them are going to really ramp up the situation uh, towards an outcome. And some of them are going are to kind of, you know, like we're doing that, that Yokoru thing. We're kind of massaging the situation in a different mm. way. 
Um, mm. I've always considered for myself that that's, that's been one of the key things that martial arts has, has helped me with. It's helped me to become a, a good, it sounds strange, but a good, a good social cog. Yeah. With a strategy. And it sounds like blatant manipulation when you, when you put it like that. And it probably is. It's just manipulative in a benevolent way. Well, manip manipulation isn't a bad word. Mm. It's not a bad word. It's an effect. It's just the application of that. It's just an application of, you know, uh, we associate manipulation with, with, with bad things, but it's, you know, all communication is manipulation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's all cause and effect, right? Yeah. So all, it's all manipulation. It's, it's manipulation is just cause and effect. It's just another name for it. It's just um, so it doesn't matter whether even if you do nothing, if you do something or you do nothing, it has two different effects. So yeah. you've altered the situation by doing something or doing nothing. Yeah, you're still. Um, so so you're damned if you're doing it, damned if you don't. You, know, you uh, might as well take part towards your. You might as well. Yeah, if you think it's going to maybe go in a way that's a little thing. I think I think it, uh, a thing with um, training in Wujing Khan, perhaps uh, you don't. The goal should be not to do it for mm. the uh, praise in the result. Yeah. It should yeah. be done from a little distance and possibly without people realizing <laughs> yeah. or something that is yeah. beneficial. Yeah. You know, helping someone, but without jumping in and going, you know, hey, I've, I've helped out, you know, that That's sort of stuff. Yeah. I've done this. Um, you, you know, and I do a lot of things that, that people don't even know that I'm doing things sometimes. And I, just, I think you've seen me do things I've, like that. I've watched you sat beside me for so long and, right. and watched me do things like that. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I've seen that I really like on, a, on a, over more than a decade. Um, mm. Yeah. And it's been obvious to me that, again, it's, it's, it's like smaller versions of that, that strategy. It's, being able to put things in place that benefit certain people and those people might not even notice. It's just that you're able to move certain things around in such a way that their lives are just easier. Yeah. And it's and not, then, there isn't then a Facebook post, you know, <clears throat> it's just part of contributing to that social um, cohesion maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. You know, it's a very human thing to do. Um, mm altruistic yeah you know if things are working well around me i'm more likely to survive absolutely <laughs> yeah you know uh minimize the chaos smooth the waters around me i'm i'm in a better spot yeah. um not doing it for those reasons but but yeah. the byproduct is yeah. that sometimes yeah. you know so so, so, yeah, so I, think that's, I think that's one of the strengths of bujin khan is that it it doesn't it doesn't lock you into a certain type of thinking. It mm. offers a, a very broad range of possibilities with your thinking, yeah. and um, uh, and one of the worst parts about it is that that people those those because it's what's the best way to say this. Uh, If you're not careful, you can dig yourself a massive hole. Yep. <laughs> and and you'll yep. see it when people first start training, particularly if they're into the ninja thing, mm. and they start to start to become aware of this type of thing. And and uh, you know, like all people, you test it out on family and friends and the people in your life, and yep. and then you start <clears throat> creating problems for yourself. And yep. you know, that's not the way to go about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sneaky thoughts sneaky things yeah you just end up covered in your own crap definitely um yeah. you know you just do things for your own benefit you're in you, you're in for not a nice time really unless you don't care about people if you really yeah. just truly don't care then, then that's an opportunity to do that to manipulate yeah, yeah yeah you know you're a you're a, might be a bit of a sociopath or something like mm. but, um yeah that's not the goal with what we're doing I've, I've found, when I think of, um, you know, a lot of the people who I know, uh, colleagues and peers in martial arts, um, friends and teachers, 
may, and maybe it's just a function of the arts that I've chosen to be involved in. In, in general, and it's not always the case, but in general, um, in those people, I don't find great malevolence. You know, for whatever reason, I find, I find forms of benevolence and, and like we are talking before, kind of attempts to just, to just contribute to general goodness. You know, they're mm. kind of adverse to um, contributing to chaos. They're, they're aware. They're just kind of like, oh, look, I'll just, I'll just buy the guy a drink because it's really unimportant. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, there's that family there. There doesn't need to be a fight broken out at the pub right now because mm. I'm offended for blah, blah, blah. And, and I've wondered, you know, over the years if that's, they've kind of either gotten to those positions because they were filtered out by the art itself, you know, that that the art demanded certain character traits of them. So that's just naturally the, the people who just were left because the others d disagreed or weren't interested in that. Um, and they moved on to other things, you know, where their character yeah. traits were more, uh, more. Yeah, different. they find a better, a better fit, but something with no growth that just reinforces their own yeah. behaviors, you know. Because I've, I've often said, and it seems to come up um, in some of my videos that so what, it all came from one of my students was asking me about how I ended up in the position. And I said, it's purely because everyone else died. It's not out of any talent. Like, <clears throat> yeah. And I, you know, some of my, my teachers would roll over in their grave to consider that I'm the one who was in the position. There were yeah. people who were far better, far more talented, but for whatever reason, they, they didn't, they didn't want to take it further. Or they didn't want they to go. Quit. You know, you know a, lot of the, a lot of the really talented people quit. I, I, I wasn't, you know, you go, when you start, you go through in a group of people, right? There might be people that are within a year of you, six months before, six months after you join. Yes. And eventually, eventually, you know, by default. Yeah. You're, at, you're left. You're left holding the bag. <laughs> you know, you're the one left holding the bag. Yep. And uh, certainly that was the case for me after about 12 years, 10 years. Yeah. Um, everywhere that I've trained had shut down. I was living in Victoria and I didn't have anywhere to train. So it was either start up my own thing. Mm. And I had run little schools before, but start up my own thing or go do something else. Yeah. Um, and at, at that stage, you know, I was very passionate about training and, and mm. Japan and, mm -hmm. and um, so I sort of, it wasn't something that I wanted to stop. Mm was yep. a huge part of my life. I mean, it's become my whole life. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of the few people in Australia, in the Wujin Khan, that, that, that all they do is martial arts teaching. You know, I can only think of two or three others, if that. Yeah. Um, who, who, for whatever reason, like you said, they've wanted to take it to that level and they've been able to. I'm sure there's been lots who haven't. They've tried and, and failed. You know? I know a lot of, well, not just in Wujin Khan, because I mix with a lot of people from all martial arts yeah. uh, school instructors mostly not so much the students but the school owners mm. and um and the, the amount of people that i've seen try to make it work mm. and and have tried really hard and haven't been able to get it to whatever number in their head they need to make it all come together yeah. it's very difficult yeah. You know, it's a very difficult thing. And I don't know, I honestly don't know why I've been, I think maybe I was just ahead of the crowd yeah. on some things. Or yeah. certainly the martial arts over the last 10 to 15 years, there's twice as many schools around now as there were before. Full-time schools, yeah. you know, um, UFC and things like that have really exploded martial arts Massive. into the consciousness of the public in a way that hasn't been around since the karate kid in the, in the 80s. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and and the focus now is on application, application, application. Yeah, yeah. Hurting people, winning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's quite sad, really. I, I'm not I mean, a fan. I don't know anything about UFC. You you know you've got you've been barely spell it. Two of the letters. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you'd have a you've been studying. Uh, you know, longer time than I have. Uh, you're involved in um, Japan and way back in the 90s in that era. Um, yeah, I started on Valentine's Day 1990. Yeah, great anniversary. <laughs>
obviously you weren't doing something else on Valentine's Day. No. So, you know, I, I started um, uh, just around 2000, 2001, and yeah. in Sydney, and looking back, even in that 20 years, um, the martial arts scene has changed dramatically from my perspective. Um, and I've only got that yeah. thing. When I started, you know, there, there weren't, I mean, there was the National All Styles, so the NAS in Sydney. Um, yeah. One of my teachers would get involved quite a lot with that. But UFC wasn't a thing. Half the public, martial arts was still an obscure karate kid idea. And Taekwondo, yep. you know, Ninja had had its time and Taekwondo had had its time in terms of the public. Everyone's really rallying behind it. And I yep. suppose it was, it was just interesting to watch suddenly this groundswell of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and, and um, UFC and MMA. You know, yeah. I when I first heard that, and I had no, I was like, what are you talking about? Well, you know, what style is it? And they go, no, it's MMA. And I'm like, yeah, but what, but like, what are they studying? You know? mm. um, and it was this new thing. And, and it's been interesting because I've watched a lot of, a lot of, peers over the time who've who've they were studying something and and then for whatever reason uh, maybe with business they moved their focus towards what was trendy um you know i haven't asked them specifically why and i'm sure that they got a lot out of it but i know they also moved their businesses and their their market they were they wanted to grow their business you know um whatever that that thing they were doing the obscure six form kung fu from you know mount Shy was no longer popular and yeah. they needed to pay rent. So suddenly, suddenly, all of a sudden, they're a BJJ instructor. And I thought, wow, this is yeah, really cool. Muay Thai instructor or yeah. mixed martial arts. The number of MMA. Oh, I, know. Yeah. I know a guy that I've been training for about, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know a guy that trained for about 20 years in mostly in Bujin Khan, but other things as well. And he kind of jumped from style to style. And, and he decided that. That made him an MMA guy. Oh, wow. Oh, because he'd had multiple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, no one really regarded him as very good in anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and he, so he graded himself to fifth band in, in MMA. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he became a fifth band in MMA. He just went, oh, I'll have that, thanks. Yep. Plucked it off the tree and yep. got a belt made with a few stripes on it. And yep. Bob's your uncle, he's a... His email signature. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, not the first. No, um, and I mean, you know, it's funny because thinking about it, the, um, uh, like being someone who's involved in an obscure martial art, two obscure martial arts. Two obscure martial arts. You know, yeah. Like one less so and one extremely so. Um, mm. So that even the even the strange and weird ones haven't even heard of Hoshin, you know. Yeah. It's like it's 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 been interesting because over the years there's there's obviously been that that awareness there. I've thought, wow, I could see why people would would suddenly move to study whatever. They do their six months in I don't know, <laughs> MMA. Can you can you even I don't even know, is there a school you can go to and just get a grading in MMA? But you know, they go and they do that because they're they're trying to to keep up with the trends there, um, but I've I've kind of watched the the friends of mine who I've known do that. I don't know; they've just moved, but they haven't really developed in any of them. They've just mm. it's very shallow study in in all of these different like a, like a stone skipping across the water, touching yeah. it every now and then. Totally, you know, yeah. Like, really, and then and then there's a few friends who I can think of who are unbelievably talented, um, and they've been studying for a similar period of time to myself, but. They've really just, they've just been interested in one thing or something. Yeah. And they've, they've just been able to scrape depth out of that to a level yeah. that's almost un unbelievable, you know. Um, mm. And I can think of some of your students, you know, when I think of that, some of them who come to mind who are, they, you know, they've arrived at the place that, that looks like a very mixed, obscure, uh, it looks like they've studied lots of different, martial arts style, but they've mm. really been studying Bujinkan the whole time. Yeah, and often just with me. Stood from different perspectives, you know. Yeah, and really not with many other people either, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, uh, well, Gid, Gid's been training with me the longest, so yeah. he's about 20 years now, yeah. and um, 
he trained with another Bujing Khan group. I, I won't say their name, yeah, yeah, um, but he yeah. trained with them for about a year or six months or something. Um, and I think when he was a kid, he did some silat when he grew up in Bali because his dad was a silat teacher. Yeah. Um, now silat and Bujing Khan actually have a lot of similarities. Yeah. Um, and Jack Silat. Mm. A lot of really similar things, a lot of differences, but a lot of, you know, some real shared things as well. Mm. Um, and, and uh, you know, Gibbs a phenomenal martial artist. Uh, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. it's a real pleasure <laughs> sharing the match with him over the last couple of decades. Yeah. Um, and very well regarded by people that know him, but hardly anybody knows him. Yeah, yeah. He's quiet and, and uh, likes a quiet life. Yeah. You know, so, oh. you, know, you know, and then there's other guys that are around as well. There's a whole bunch of people that have more than... 10 years training with me, probably half a dozen or so of those. And, yeah. and then a whole bunch of people um, that, that have been training between five and 10 years, you know, yeah. many, many people. Um, yeah. I do think yeah, that. Yeah, and, and I, I, you know, I've pretty much only trained in Bujin Khan. I, I've uh, Taekwondo when I was a kid in Bujin Khan. I had a little bit of a look at Sistema for a while, but not under an instructor, just playing with my with yeah. a few people in the backyard um, for six months, um, watching videos and things. Um, that's another martial art that is very similar to Bujin Khan in some ways, mm. uh, but different in other ways. Mm. Mm. Um, and what else? Um, I don't know. I can't think of many other things that I've, I've really looked into. I've always been quite happy with, with what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it has some holes, but it doesn't have big gaping holes like some systems. Uh, it sort of has a little bit of everything in it. You know, it's more of a stew than a <laughs> than a steak. Yeah, yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah. Um, mix hot pot. I, I get bored easy too. You know, I get uh, yeah. I, I get uh, so for me, I need. It, it, it's good for me to be able to concentrate on things and practice concentration, yeah. but also to train things from different ways. So things like, you know, if I'm doing sword or bow or Takagi Yoshimaru or Shin and Furu, yeah. but they're all similar ways of looking at the same sorts of things, you know, just, yeah. sorry, different ways of looking at the same things. So it's, yeah. it, um, it keeps it interesting for me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's really important. I wouldn't be able to do 30 years of training yeah. if it was boring. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you know, so absolutely, uh, yeah. And every time I've needed to use it, um, in in real life, in a physical sense, mm. uh, it's kept me safe, mm. and I've been able to do it without really hurting anyone, which is important to me, yeah. and it's kept me from possibly ending up in court or something stupid, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and and I've had a lot of students that have used it to protect themselves as well, and recently people with against people with knives on you know a number of students yeah uh, so, and i've never had anyone stabbed never one had anyone badly injured of my yeah. students so i'm really really happy with that yeah. and i've never had anyone that's beaten the crap out of someone so badly that they've ended up in hospital or something like that either so they haven't they, yeah. they haven't yeah. over responded yeah and ruined their own lives yes and by winning have lost yeah you yeah know, really. you know, win the uh, battle snatch. Snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and it is uh, that I, I um I, I'm aware of the time. I'm aware that we we need to wrap it up. But well, uh, a little, yeah, it's such a good it's such a good uh, uh you know topic. I I maybe I was just very fortunate that the art when I just wandered into the Ho Shin Dojo in Avalon was the first martial arts school I wandered into. I, I didn't pick mm. that out of um having surveyed the the offerings you know? um i was 13 that was, i i didn't even realize that there were other options you know um yep. and and so i just took it for granted that the ideas about you know well how are you going to respond in this way how are you going to talk to the police about how you responded in that way how are you going to how's that going to look on camera when there was a security camera or how, how are people going to think about you after you've responded in this way i just took it for granted that they were just Things that How are you going to feel about yourself? Yeah, exactly. In I retrospect. Things that were innate to martial arts. I didn't realise until I uh, left Sydney and started travelling and studying 
and, and enjoying dipping my toe in other arts and meeting other martial artists. It's only then I started to, to realize that that wasn't necessarily the case, that actually yeah. a lot of these people were just trying to win something. And yeah. it was like they'd only considered the next 30 minutes of their life, you know? Yeah. Very, whereas for me, I think martial arts is a life strategy. And I, I think what attracted me to ninjutsu as like, you know, uh, specifically out of the Bujinkan, even mm. separate to the other schools, was this idea of th like thriving long term. It's like, how do you actually yeah. survive? How do you, how do you be a small group in a forest that everyone's hunting you out? And how do you survive for 400 years? I mean, wow, that's, that's, that takes an incredible amount of long term um, planning, you know, in every moment. Yeah. And I think how do you like, survive so long that people even forget you're real? Yeah, absolutely. You become, right. a, you become a, a myth. You become a legend. You become a you become a comic book character. Yep. Yep. You so, know, Mike and Mary. That's a really interesting. Really interesting survival thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, look, um, we're probably at the time, the end of the video. Thanks so much for joining me for All the right. chat, Craig. It was excellent. Pleasure. Um, um, I'd love yeah. to do another one. We could, you know, I've got. We could. Well, I think we could comfortably talk for another hour or so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Different. If uh, maybe I'll get in touch during the the week and we'll tee up a second session. That suits. Maybe. You. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Can... Sounds good. Excellent. All, All right. right. Thanks very much, Craig. We'll still uh, end up Thanks. on the Facebook page soon, and uh, and I'm sure people yeah. will comment. And and uh, if you're watching this on the Facebook page, definitely leave a comment in the in the post and say hi. Yeah, please do. Thanks very much, Craig. Have a lovely night. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye.